Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a walkthrough of how you can remember and write all your riffs using a program called Guitar Pro. So if you're not familiar with it, it's like a tabbing software that you can tab out all your riffs and songs and add different instruments. So the reason that you'd wanna do this is obviously to structure and write songs. It's a different way of writing, but also to remember the riffs because you can forget them quite easily. And one thing to do is I usually record what you're playing, what most people do, and then they have to go back and relearn it by ear. And if your ear's not that developed, it can be a bit of a struggle sometimes. So this is a great solution for that. In the link below in the description, I'll leave a link here. So if you do have the software, you can download this file and follow along. So for this example, I've just input a couple of different metal sounding riffs and different rhythms in a pretty basic way so you can get used to the software. So I'm gonna show you these riffs and then I'm gonna show you how to set up a project from scratch. Then I'm gonna walk you through how to input all the notes and beats in this template here and kind of give you an idea how you can create your own. And then hopefully from there, you'll be able to just continue writing your own riffs. How I've designed this template here is I've obviously programmed the riff here in different bars and, and some different styles. And in the next one here, it says fill in the bar notes. I've just got the actual rests of these beats here in the program. So that's that rest there. These rests have different values. So this one here would be a eighth note and these ones are 16th notes. So different rhythms for the rests. And how you would do this is you just fill in those rests with the notes just to get used to the program. But, but we'll go through that in a later than video. Then I've also got an empty bar next to it. So if you've gone through these bars with already the beats here and you've added the notes in and you're comfortable with that, you can move on to starting from completely scratch here on a blank bar there. So, so now I'm gonna move on to showing you a blank project and how to set up and go through some of the features here that's gonna help you be able to do this. So when you open up Guitar Pro, it's gonna prompt you with this section here in a blank canvas here. So it's, it's gonna have different sections here for strings, orchestra, drums, and MIDI and all sorts of stuff like that, which is helpful for later on where you can add some extra instruments like drums and bass and everything. But we're gonna start off with the electric guitar. Just gonna set on overdrive here. And in these settings down here, this is where you change all the guitar settings. So the project I set up was a seven string guitar. Uh, you can do six strings or whatever ones you want. You've got up to 10 strings here, you can see. I'm gonna change it to a seven string and you can change the instrument here to a guitar or a bass. Also, there's different tunings we can change here. So this is the standard tuning. We're gonna create this one right now and that's gonna open up our blank canvas here. So now I've got one bit of tab here in standard tuning and our tempo. That's all that's available right now. So this is the way to change your tuning when you're in the project. So if you go up to the right here and the little wrench where it says tuning on the instrument. So there's a song here and the track tab. So you click the track tab, then go to this little wrench and it's gonna bring up your guitar tuning. So if you're playing heavy music like myself or in some alternate tunings, you're gonna have a lot of different tunings that you wanna use. So this is where you can change it. So easy way to start if you haven't got any presets saved yet that aren't in your tuning is to come in here and just add a standard tuning of whatever strings you have. So I have a guitar here in drop A. So all I need to do is change this seventh string here down two semitones to A, and that's gonna bring us to drop A for the tuning here. Up the top here, we could also save this as a preset if we didn't wanna keep changing it every time we entered in a new project, and that's a good thing to do as well. Select that one. So now we've got all the strings added that we need. So now our tuning and instrument is set up and you can see here, it's just default to 120 BPM. So we can click on it here and we can actually adjust it by a couple of ways. We can either drag this up and down. We can change the tempo that way. We can tap tempo if we've got a feel and a pulse and you can obviously here adjust it manually. So, so we're gonna leave it on 120 for the tempo here. So the main sections of the software that you're really gonna need to know the most is this section up the top here with all the different notes and rests. So starting with a whole note, so a whole note is up here. You click that button there and it highlights, we've got whole note. And if I do an open, you can see we just added a note there on the open string and it's a whole note. So it's doing the whole bar of that note. So to give us some extra bars, so we're not just working with one bar and some extra room here, all you need to do is click the arrow key on your keyboard and you can create as many different bars as you want. 
go down to system layout and you can click this button here. It says fixed bar count per system. And we can change that to whatever you like. You can do it to one. I prefer to have two bars and it just makes it look a bit neater and simpler. Hit okay. And now we have two bars per line here. So firstly, how to actually add notes into the section here. There's a couple ways to do it. And it's based around your keyboard here. So up here are all the notes and we're gonna talk about the values of those and how to add them in in just a moment. But to add in a note into the program, basically just wanna add the number and click whatever string that you're on for that note. So if you're playing the open string on the seventh string, then we can just add that zero on there and it's gonna change with this whole note here. So that's the same thing with any of the numbers on the keyboard, just type in whatever number that you want and whatever string that you want to use. Another way to do it is go up to top here and you can click on the show guitar fretboard. So you can click on any of the notes here on the fretboard and it's gonna put them in the program. Just like that. And another great way to do that, and this is very helpful, especially if you're working with key signatures and you wanna be in the right key. And the way to do that is just go up to tools here, go down to scales, and that's gonna open up the scales menu here where you can select the different keys of the scales here and change them. So at the moment I'm in C major, but I can go down to minor here. And it's gonna switch all those notes so you can play in the same key. But right now we're gonna talk about the rhythms and how to import the notes correctly with the right beats and what all these mean and how to do that. This very first one up here, this note, it says that if you highlight, it says a whole note. So a whole note is gonna fill out this whole entire section. So this whole section is gonna be the bar. So there's four pulses in the bar. So you go one, two, three, four. So this whole note, if we enter it in. Now, if we turn our click track on to here, we can see that's our tempo there. It's our metronome. So if we activate that and press play, you can see this one note here played throughout the whole duration of those four beats per bar. So, and that's what we've got up here, our four, four, so four beats per measure. And you can change all that if you want to do some different ones here. And it shows you visually down the bottom there and you can change these ones here. So once you get more advanced, you can change all these different ones. If you want to do six, eight and all different time signatures as well. So, but for this video, we're just going to stick to something simple. We're going to stay with four, four. So what I've added in here, I've added a note from each one here. So we've got the first one, which is a whole note. So over here, the whole note, which is going to fill out the whole entire bar, which you can see here. So that whole note fills out a hundred percent of the bar. So I've got up here. So that one, two, three, four, that one, whole note is filling out that whole entire bar here. So, so then we move on to the next bar and the next note here, we have a half note. So a half note is just 50% of this note here. So, so having two half notes in this bar here would make the hundred percent of the bar. So one of these being equal to 50% of the bar. Now next, goes into sort of subdivision. So trying to make this as simple as possible. So the next note across here is going to be a quarter note. Think of it as you're just slicing things up into sort of like a pie. So the next thing um, I wrote here, a hundred percent of the beat. So the beat is different. So the bar is this whole entire section and the beat is that pulse. So that one, two, three, four. And you can see we're gonna hit a note on every single pulse, which would be a quarter note. This is what that sounds like. And then next we're in the next subdivision here, which is going to be 50% of the beat. And that is for our eighth note. So you're going to be using most of these a lot in that template. I provided a lot of them were using eighth notes and 16th notes. So, so eighth notes is going to be 50% of the beat. So what that means is here, we've got four beats. One easy way to see it is you can see these joins here. So that's going to tell us in the program and in music notation that there's going to be one, two, three, four. So these groupings of two all equal one of those one, two, three, fours. And you're gonna hear a da 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 da. So when you think of it this way, when you're importing them into your programs and you're trying to put the music that you put on your instrument into the program or any sort of notation, one of these here is gonna equal 50% of this beat. So that one, so adding two, that would make 100%. So then adding the next one, it's going to be 50% of the next beat. So beat two, add the, this next one. So that's going to be 100% of 
beat two, 50% of beat three, 100% of beat three, 50% of beat four, and 100% of beat four. And that will be the completion of the cycle of that entire bar. The next one we have here is gonna be 16th notes. So same thing again, you can see they all divide here. So dividing again, so it's gonna be 25% of the beat. So you can see here, they're grouped in fours. So that's our one beat, our two beat, three beat, and four beat. So 25%, if we add up all these notes here, that's gonna be 25%, another 25%, another 25%, and then another 25%. So 25, 50, 75, 100%. And that sounds like this. The last two aren't gonna be ones that you use too much unless you're really shredding and playing really fast here. So the next one here, we've got the same thing again. We've got 30 second note for this one. And you can see here, it's grouping them all together. So we've got four of them. And you can see it's playing eight notes per that one beat. So 30 second notes are gonna sound like this. Last we have 64th notes and that's gonna sound like this. It's gonna be extremely fast. Probably not gonna be using that much in your rhythms because it's gonna be too much and too fast. They're good to know because if you do have slower tempos that you're writing to, you might use some of these other ones here. So hopefully that gives you a basic start into rhythm. So basically all music is is rhythm combined with scales, notes and keys and chords and harmony. So now there's a couple other things in here which I won't go into in this video, but these dots here and they increase the value of the note. There's also a double dotted one as well. So what these dots do, they increase the note value by 50% of the next fastest value. So if we put in this half note and then we hit this dot, it's gonna increase the note value of this half note that we've added by 50% of this next fastest note here, which is a quarter note. So now technically we have a half note plus a quarter note just in this one note. So this is our half note and with the dot there, so it's adding the half note, it's gonna ring out for the length of the next fastest value. So you're going down. So you always think it's adding the fastest value. So whatever's faster. So the next fastest one's gonna be a quarter note. So think of this as a half note plus a quarter note. And then we have another quarter note here to fill out the measure. So this half note with the dot is gonna fill out our one, two, and three. And then here on the last beat on four, this quarter note is gonna fill out that completion of that bar you can see here. Hopefully that gives you a head start on the rhythms part of this, which I found is probably the most complicated part, which seems to be the most difficult, especially for me when I was starting out using this program was understanding those beats and the percentages and how they worked and how to translate what I was doing on, on guitar into the software so I could replicate what I was creating. And that was a big thing that bogged me down. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of that. And it's just something you've got to develop over time. You'll get better at it, seeing it. And one thing that helped me out a lot is knowing what the percentages are and seeing these in the your measure. Because if you break a measure like this in the software, you can see it's red because it's the program's basically telling you that the measure here is incomplete, which it is. One thing that might be able to help as well is you can go up here, you can select your bar and go to tools and then go up to bar arranger. And you can see it's just fixed it here by adding a rest. So it's added a half note rest to fill out the time for the measure here. So we can still play those notes that we added, but it added in a rest. So that can help you as well. Now, obviously we're not always playing consistent notes and there's rest. So the last one here is rest. So you can add rests in obviously as well. It's the same thing basically adding in notes. The way to do it is you basically you wanna add your notes in first. So if we just copy this section here, paste it into this next bar, we have a complete bar here. So if we wanted rests in here, what we could do is we could select all of them and just click the rest and it's gonna rest between whatever note value that we're giving it here. So currently we're at a 16th note rests. So that's gonna fill out the whole entire bar. So we could select them all and change them to eighth notes. You can see there's too many notes in the rest there. So we'd have to remove some. Because they're eighth notes, we only need eight rests. So we can delete these ones. Same thing as well. We can go through, change them again, change it to quarter notes. We only need four. So we delete four here. And then we have four rests in that bar there. And that goes through all of them. So the way to use them, you want to import your notes first. And then you can go to the note here and then change it to a rest wherever you want within your rhythm. So here I'm just changing a couple of them to the same eighth notes that we've got here. You can see. So that is eighth notes rests and a couple eighth notes opens there. And that sounds like this. 
So another thing I want to talk about just in this section here that might be helpful before we finish up is tying notes. When you're trying to write a section and it rings out for a certain amount of period of time, instead of it cutting off with a rest, you might want it to ring out. So like a duh, 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 instead of a duh, 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 depending on what you want to write. So the way to do that in this program, so if we just import a note, a couple of notes here. So at the moment we have some quarter notes here. So it's going to go duh, 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 basically on the metronome. So if we want to change that, what we can do, say we want this first note to ring out for the length of this note and then carry on to this next note here. We can select this note on the second beat here and go up to the menu here where it says type beat, which is L shift as a shortcut. If we click that on that note when it's highlighted. Now it's going to tie the beat together. So now it's going to sound like this. Last thing I'll touch on here is you can also build chords. As you can see here, I've built a couple of chords in the program just by stacking notes on top of each other. So you can do that as well if you want to build chords. So if you want to build chords, you can just stack the notes on top of those ones on the different strings and you can do as many as you want. Obviously you want to make it playable so you can stack them on like that to make different chords. There is another tool here in the software called chords. So up the top here where it says chords uh, has a chord library which will bring up this diagram here and you can click this and you can search through, see we've got the, the bass notes, um, the tonality of the chord. So you can choose C and it's going to bring up all different variations of different chords and you can tweak them to whatever you want to make here. If you know what you're looking for, hit OK. Then it gives you a chord in the chord diagram and you just click on it and now it just imports that chord. So hopefully this helps you out if you're writing music and you want to remember it and not forget it and Maybe you're diving into this program for the first time and will help you get started at least. Like I said earlier in the video, if you want to just download the template and work off this to practice on, um, you're free to do that. I'll leave the link in the description so you can download these project files directly. So you can get used to putting in the notes yourself and entering it in and learning the software. But good luck on your journey in songwriting. One thing before you go, if you stuck around, a little bonus tip for you. If you're trying to program in your rhythms and you're not quite sure where they land on the beat, one trick that you can try to do as well. They have this percentage meter up at the top here of how the playback comes back through the program. So right now it's at 100% speed, which is normal, which is 100% speed of 120 BPM. So what you can do is you can switch this down to 50% or 25% of the speed, and you can hear the beats a lot clearer when you're trying to add them into your measure here. So for example, if we play this one here where it's all uh, this different rhythm here, if we play that with this slow down measure, That's a good trick to use, especially if you don't know on the pulse, if you need to use a 16th quarter note or an eighth note, you can kind of slow it down and hear the uh, click a bit slower and program it in that way and then speed it up afterwards by just going back to 100% speed. Thank you for sticking around and watching this video. Hopefully it helps you out in your songwriting journey. Subscribe for more stuff like this and I'll see you all in the next video.